Hey fam. So our last conversation was really intense. We spoke a little bit about the shadow world and pandemic part two, and it's coming. It's not that it's coming, it's here. And people are not even realizing what's taking place and how this is going to come. And then I got bombarded. I mean, you guys just hit me up and said, well, what do we do? What must we do? What is your opinion? I like my little lamp. I got this at Fendi. Oh, turn on. There we go, it's pretty cool, right? Fendi Chateau. I like with the light on or I like with the light on. Anyway, we spoke a little bit about the shadow world and this pandemic part two that's coming. It's already here. But people started messaging me and DMing me. I mean, I've never got so many responses like this where people said, what do we do now? We know that it's here. We know that it's coming. We know that it's already here. What must we do? Well, the first thing I want to say is that it's very important that as we're talking about these topics that people are not going to talk about in the church, they're not going to talk about, you know, it's so sad to say this, but the church has became entertainment. I mean, you're looking now at them mimicking entertainers, and it's unfortunately that even the worship, I mean, doesn't even sound the same. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's more just pure entertainment. And this is all part of what the shadow agenda is. But when we understand the shadow world, and I'm going to get into what we must do during this second pandemic, but when we understand the, pan, the, the shadow world, the shadow world is really there and it represents darkness. And darkness is always a place for transformation. It is a place for atonement. It is a place where the soul is, if it goes through the proper process, the soul can transmute and turn that into the light. It's interesting because you see in Genesis where Joseph says to his siblings, what you meant for evil, God turned it to good. Meaning that he was able to transmute that negativity that came from around him. And it was important that he was able to transmute it because he did not allow it to get to his heart. And this gets me to my next point. So darkness, or when we're dealing with this type of stuff, even in the crystal, so when we understand Christ, he who knew no sin became sin. He began to take on the darkness of the world and transmuted it and became the light of the world. Do you see how powerful this is? But this is the next powerful part in the pandemic part two. So people are saying, what do we do? How do we prepare? What, what is some of the stuff that you do? And I know that you want me to tell you, go here, do this, but I'm gonna give you very simple on what you must do to prepare for this. It's one simple word, discernment. And I'm going to talk about the gift of discernment because most people don't understand how the gift of discernment is developed. In the localized dogmatic Christendom, they tell you discernment comes from this and comes from that. And it, and it comes from your prayer, prayer life. And some of this is true. But true discernment is birthed out of trauma. You cannot heal what you didn't feel. OK, you're only able to discern many times through things that you've had trauma. And this has to deal with you dealing with your own shadow. Yeah, your own shadow. Paul puts it in this way. When I want to do good, evil is present. When I want to do uh, bad, good is present. This is his shadow. This is the ego. This is really what it represents to transmute, to have that holy alchemy, that, 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 that alchemical process of where at we become a new creature in Christ. Discernment. So discernment is developed through our pain. It's developed through our trauma. And this is how we're able to detect it. Uh, no one can detect or discern an alcoholic like someone who had to deal with some form of addiction or some type of alcoholism. No one can discern a type of abuse than someone that went through abuse. They were able to smell it. They could sniff it a mile away. No one's able to discern a perverse spirit unless if they have dealt with it in some form or fashion, whether it was directly or whether it was indirect. So when we are navigating through this pandemic, you have to have discernment. You have to know when to travel, where, where you're supposed to be at, where you're not supposed to be at, where you need to be at, what you shouldn't be doing, where you should be socializing. And this deals with you being true to thyself. So how do you navigate through this pandemic? Through discernment. I want you to type down below because when you think of discernment, where does it come from? Discernment is connected to the stomach. It is connected to the active brain. There are three brains in the body. You have the active brain, which is in the stomach. You have the reactive brain, which is in the head. 
And then you have the passive brain, which is in the heart. Both of the, these have speeches. You have the reactive speech. This is the mind. It constantly reacts to things. The active speech, this is what where it goes to feelings. When you're like, man, I got a bad feeling in my stomach. Or when you're getting, you're like, man, I can't explain it. That's the active. And then you have the act passive voice, which deals with the heart. This is where God whispers. So you have to get your spirit and your soul in alignment so that you're able to discern what you must do. Because how you must move through this pandemic number two might be different than someone else. And I teach this in my school of prophets where I go even deeper into understanding the three voices in the body or the three brains, the floating brain, the reactive brain, and the passive brain. This pandemic number two is going to be heavy. You guys are already watching it. And there's going to be strands of things that people are not gonna be able to explain, but you're gonna to have to use your discernment to be able to navigate this and not just trust what you hear. Type in the comments what you think. It's here, people, it's here.